This is the plate of Mark Whitten. He says he was driving his car for lift with a passenger when the defendant, who was driving a big 27-foot truck, crashed into him. His car was severely damaged. It took 13 days to repair. He needs his car to make a living and is suing this amateur truck driver for $1,410. The amount of his insurance deductible and lost wages. This is the defendant, Frank Ross. He says he was leaving a nursing home, turning right, when the plaintiff, for some strange reason, tried to wedge himself between the wheels of his truck and the curb. It was like he was trying to get into an accident. Even the cops asked him why he would do something like that. Bottom line, he wasn't ticketed for any wrongdoing and owes this weirdo nothing. He's accused trucking up a Lyft driver. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff says that he was driving a customer around in his Lyft car when all of a sudden the defendant crashed into him in his huge 27-foot box truck, and he wants money for the repairs. But the defendant says the plaintiff tried to squeeze into his lane when he was making a right-hand turn, and he got clipped due to his own negligence. It's the case of don't box me in. All right, Mr. Whitten, uh, you're suing Mr. Ross and the company, which we will not mention, for $1,410 for your insurance deductible and 13 days of lost work uh, based on an accident that happened that you say was Mr. Ross's fault. Let me hear from you. Well, if you look at the pictures, you can see that he was on one side of the two-lane exit to a private parking lot. So he was on the left side, and I went to the right side to turn right. He was going to turn left. And so I think since he's in the big truck and since he's the amateur driver, he couldn't turn left because of all the construction and traffic going on. So he decided to turn right. Suddenly, he just turns right and just runs over the front of my car. All right. And let me hear from you, Mr. Ross. You tell me how the accident happened. He is absolutely correct. There was construction on the street. Um, and I put in the, before I left the location that I was at, I put in the GPS of where I needed to go and I needed to make a right-hand turn. It is a 26-foot box truck, so it makes a wide right turn. And because of it being a narrow street, in order for me to make that turn onto the street without going over onto the curb, I positioned myself in between the, where I was straddling the left and the right lane. So I was in the center of both of them. Okay, and there's not actually right a lane. This is the driveway out. There's room for two cars. There's a line that says to make a, there's an arrow on the ground to make a left. Okay, so there's actually, it's actually painted right. on there. Okay, go on. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So I put, straddled myself on both of them, and I turned on my right turn blinker and waited for traffic to go by, and I started to make my right-hand turn. And when I started to make my right-hand turn, that's when I felt the truck jostle because I ended up damaging his vehicle. All right, but you say the accident is his fault because what? He squeezes up on the side of you after seeing you? He wedged you? himself, yes, ma'am. He wedged himself between my bumper and the curb. And there is a stepladder on the back of my truck that is actually what caught him. And if he had been two feet back, it would have never happened. So he just I, admitted his guilt. Uh, uh, what, Mr. Whitten? He just admitted his guilt. All, how? all he's saying is, I, the, but if you look at the picture. No, no, how did he admit his guilt? I want to follow your line of thinking. How did he just admit his guilt? That he suddenly made a right turn, and if I wasn't right next to his truck, that he wouldn't have hit me. Right, but that's not admitting that's his guilt. Said. He's saying you were in a place you weren't, you shouldn't have been, that you should have waited for the Well, 20... look at the pictures, Your Honor. Mr. Whitten, let me finish my sentence. Do you hear me talking? Yes, ma'am. What he's saying is not, he's not admitting his guilt. What he's saying is, I am a big truck. I am making a right-hand turn. And, and then all of a sudden, someone sees space. And so they go to the space. And they're trying to make a right-hand turn before me. But they're not, they're not respecting the truck. And the fact that the truck has to do that. So you kind of got to, you know, you got to wait for the truck to, to it, the truck is taking up all the space. But there's a little space here. So you, you, you get, it's not like an inch. It's not an inch. It's space enough for his car to get there and jam you up when you're making your right. Um, you know, he is already at this spot when you're driving up, correct? Because you, Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So you Fully in the left lane. Fully in the left lane. 
yeah. all the way over to the left lane. Because he's going to make a left. Except for... I, I drive up like a normal person to make my right. He suddenly turns right. Look at And like I say, I sold you picture proof how far over I was from the curb. I wasn't squeezing no, my way in No, you showed me where you say you were. That doesn't, no, that's, that's where I was. That's where, that's where the accident right, happened. That's, that's, where saying, my car took that's the like pictures. me saying that if I say it into the mirror, there's two people testifying to it. That's what you, where you say you were. There's no question that there was enough room for your car. What he is saying is, you, you know, he, he's there first, and then you come up, and, the, and he's going to make a right. There were no outdoor cameras? No, ma'am, not on the street. Uh, Mr. Whitten, um, when you come into court, you have the burden of proof. That means you have to prove to me by a preponderance of the evidence that the accident happened the way you're saying. I honestly don't know which way it happened. If the accident happened, the, the truck is there, the truck is straddling like the center of where he should be, and there's room for you, and you come up here disrespecting the size of that truck, because I would never do that, and I, frankly, I have a friend who did that on a bike and lost a leg. Um, this is a very dangerous thing to do with a big 26-foot truck. A very dangerous thing to do. And then the accident, I think, would be your fault for creeping up and into whatever space you see in front of you, passing him and trying to get there in a rush. If the accident happened, as you said, that he's completely in the left-hand lane and you're completely in the right-hand lane, you see him there, you assume he's making a left, and then you're driving and then he changes his mind and makes a right, then he's at fault. The problem is I don't know which of those two it is because I've seen both things happen nonstop. The insurance company found in my favor after their investigation, by the way. Okay. And which, I have that right Which here, insurance right? company? That was with Progressive Insurance. I don't understand. Then why are you suing for a deductible if you went through his insurance? He didn't go the, the, through just our insurance. insurance. I know that. Let paying. me do what I do, Mr. Ross. <laughs> Mr. Sorry. Witten. I'm sorry, How man. did the, his insurance company find in your favor? I still have a deductible with my insurance company no matter what. Right. But they went you after have that because your insurance the company paid the car, not his insurance company. And your insurance company paid the car because it's your insurance. Mm. They're going to pay the car. That's why you have insurance. My insurance company was also going back for the deductible when this came up and the small claims court came up. And so then I had, they dropped their case against it for the deductible. Yeah. So, but where right. am I so finding evidence of an independent investigator that found in your favor? It's your insurance. They have to pay your car. So there's nothing <laughs> about that that makes them have found it in your favor. You know what it is? It's a he said, he said. That's what it is. I'd love to have a camera. No, to I see. also think my pictures proved my point. No, how do your pictures prove your point? I'm three feet away from the curb. I'm not sneaking up on anywhere. Hold on one second. It's not a matter of Those sneaking. Pictures were it's the a original pictures. Just a second. Just a second. Calm down. Before my car's moving. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Okay. <sighs> Usa. Okay. This is a picture of the damage to your car, right? Right. And what part of your car ended up... Does anybody have a picture of your truck? Uh, I do, but... Where's I, the I mean, ladder? Could, I, Where do you keep the ladder? That you it's in the back of the truck by the lift gate. Okay. Which would mean that you're already making the right when he thinks he can make the right. If the no, 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 no. The ladder is in the middle of hits. the truck and yes, well it's on there. It's not on the back of maybe, the lift maybe gate. Maybe not. not at all. All right, let's see, though, no, what that, about that your letters. pictures proves where you were? The picture where it shows the front of the car, and you see how far away okay, from the Okay, but these pictures are taken afterwards in order to prove your case in court, correct? No, I got out of the, no, the, the car wasn't moved. The car was not moved then. Well, where's where the my truck? my car was turning. Well, he moved the truck because he was in the middle of the road at that point. When were these pictures taken? The, right after the accident. Uh, I have no idea because I didn't take pictures until Where? after I... Oh, is this a Penske truck? Hold on. Is that pictures? your truck in the back? Yes, ma'am. That sure is. Yes. Okay. Okay. And as the actuality, if, when he was taking pictures, he did walk completely around my truck. And he did move his car. I moved my car after the pictures. How do we know? I mean, you keep talking about how obvious it is. He didn't get a ticket, right? It wasn't obvious to the officer either. He had no, you guys exchange information and sent both of you your own way and didn't give anybody a ticket because he doesn't know what happened. Listen to me. I'm not finding that you're at fault and I'm not finding that you're at fault. I don't need to find out what really happened. I don't. What I need to do is ask myself, has Mr. Whitten proven to me 
that it was Mr. Ross's fault. And I find that you have failed to prove that to me. And for that reason alone, my verdict is in favor of Mr. Ross, and I am not ordering him to pay you $1,400. So the case ends with the uh, plaintiff losing the case because he could not convince the judge he deserved to prevail. Mr. Whitten, you heard the judge. You were smiling before. I, I don't know if you're smiling now, but what are you thinking? No, oh, well, everybody's wrong in this case. All I did was, was minding my own business, and all of a sudden this maniac runs me over, and now I'm at, I, I, lose, I, I lose out all kinds of money. That's what it comes down to. Obviously, I know you're upset. You're sorry, but hey. What can I tell you? You couldn't convince the judge, and that's it. Mr. Ross, uh, how do you feel about the outcome of the case? I'm sure you're, you're pleased, right? I'm just happy the facts came out and the truth was there. It, 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 I'm not saying whether he was at fault or I was at fault, but the fact of the matter is he was in a place he shouldn't have been. All right. Well, <laughs> obviously, if he hadn't been there, he wouldn't have had a problem uh, damaging his car. All right. That'll bring this case to a close. The judge has made a decision and everybody has to live with it just like that. OK, Harvey. Doug, it's as simple as this. There is a burden of proof in every lawsuit. And in this case, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. And if it's 50 50 and the judge just can't decide, plaintiff loses. My sister left me her car in her will and the car was totaled. Does this mean I'm just out of luck? Well, you're out of luck because your sister died, but... Right, I mean, uh, my God, I, I, what? <laughs> that's, this sounds horrible. Like, maybe she was in the car and got hit by yeah, a train or something. Yeah, I can't tell what she's... What, I yeah. don't know if the person asking the question is saying, by the time my sister died, completely unrelated, right. my sister had totaled the car. That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. Right. And the answer is that um, if the car had insurance and insurance is supposed to pay and fix it, insurance will still pay and fix it. Right. Um, if somebody hit the car and that somebody is liable, you could stand and, and you're, you are now inheriting you're the car. You're assigned that you're car. You're assigned action, that right. car along with its assets and liability. Right. You could sue whoever it is that hit that right. car. Right, right. If what you're saying is through no one's fault, you know, it's, it's uh, totaled and it was my sister's fault and she right. didn't have insurance. Right. Yeah, it sounds like you're out of luck. Right. If, um, so, if the car yeah. had no insurance and it got totaled and you, you inherit only the car, then you get maybe like a crushed up little cube of metal or something, right. make right. a coffee table out of it. But you're not really going to get uh, much of a windfall, right? right.